Shiraz, 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 Shiraz. I'm begging of you, please don't stain my tea. Shiraz, 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 Shiraz. I'd like to drink you with some rare old speed. Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com here. It's Syrah Stroke Shiraz Day here. Now, I've got five wines. Uh, actually, Syrah or Shiraz. Now, wh why two names? They are actually the same grape variety. Syrah is what they call it in, in France, uh, where it makes the, the most famous wines are things like uh, uh, Cote Roti, Hermitage. Uh, Shiraz is what they call it in Australia, uh, which is probably the, the country that introduced most people to the grape. Now, what's the difference uh, in terms of when people put it on the label? I suppose if people want to make something that they think is in the French style, maybe a bit more, less fruity, uh, a bit more earthy, uh, or that, then they'll put syrup on the label. Uh, if they want to make something a bit more uh, bold and buxom and fruity, then they'll put Shiraz. Uh, first three wines, they've all got, uh, they're not 100% Syrah stroke Shiraz. Uh, they just got it in uh, in, in the blend. Um, first one is uh, a, from a place called La Clap. In uh, it's a bit of the Coteau de Languedoc in southern France, from Chateau Pêche Redon, two thousand and eight. Now two thousand and eight, and it's still you've got its young, vibrant, juicy fruit. Lots of bouncy black currant um, and a bit of that uh, southern herbs. They have this stuff on the on the hillside that they call the garrigue, and it's all these wild herbs like thyme and bay and um, yeah, bit, bits of stuff like that, and you get that character in a, in a lot of southern French wines. Mm. Ah, oh, that's a vibrant, juicy youngster. Um, one of the main grapes there is, is Carignan, and Carignan gives it a really nice, fresh, peppery backbone, white pepper, oh, lovely, refreshing red wine. Um, refreshing red wine is something that some people in... Uh, certain parts of the world would uh, do well to find out about because uh, uh, they, they seem to think that red wine has to sock you around the head rather than uh, be refreshing. Next one, also from southern France, uh, from the Costier de Nîmes, Chateau d'Or et de Guel. So named because gold or guel, apparently Old English, uh, sorry, Old French for red is the colour of their uh, crest. A uh, bit more Shiraz, stroke, Syrah here, about 40% Syrah with, uh, again, some Carignan and Grenache. And it's two years older, so you're getting more of the, the slightly meaty, leathery edge coming through. Still some of those southern herbs. It feels like um, a, a richer wine, and I don't know whether that, I don't think that's entirely due to the uh, two years extra ageing. It, it, it's mellowed, certainly, but I think it had a bit more flesh in the first place. Yeah, you're getting a soft, meaty, mellow edge there, which is very attractive. Um, toss up between which of those two I like. I like the freshness of the first one, I like the mellowness of the, the second. I think I'd probably edge towards the younger wine there. Okay, next one. Uh, you may have seen La Chasse du Pape. It's a, a popular brand, and uh, this is their uh, Shiraz Grenache 50 50 blend. La Chasse du Pape. Do you think they are trying to uh, put Chateau Neuf du Pape in your mind? Could they possibly be? Of course not. Comes from uh, uh, the Gabriel Mefra winery. Uh, they're the guys, if you've ever had the Fat Bastard wines, they're the ones who, who, who do that. And uh, let's have a see what this is like. Well, it smells very friendly. Um, I can't say it smells as interesting as the first two, but um, it smells what I call user-friendly wine. You know, some, sometimes you need, um, if you, you'll, you'll have normal people as, a, as opposed to wine people around a table, and you need a wine that sits at a point where if you're not a wine person, you want something that you can relate to. And if you are a wine person, you want something with a bit of personality that you can relate to. This seems to be something that's sort of nicely halfway between them, really. It's good, it's got a bit of um, fresh spice to it, a juicy strawberry edge, um, a bit of clove, some cinnamon, 
um, what I call fair enough wine, particularly at seven pounds. And um, I can't possibly tell you that there is an embargo on and that a major supermarket is going to be reducing it next week, so I won't. Okay, next two, final two, are 100% Syrah, stroke Shiraz. First one from a strange place for, uh, for the grape. Um, now, Quinta de Noval is a uh, porthouse, and in recent years it moved into table wine, and uh, they, they use the traditional port grapes most of the time for their, their table wines, but they started planting a bit of Syrah. And this is a wine called Labrador. Uh, yes, it is named after a dog. It's that the winemaker's got a Labrador, so they put Labrador on the label. This isn't a finished label. Uh, I don't know what it's eventually going to look down look like. I don't think they do yet. But 100% Syrah from the Douro. And it's got that smell. It's got. If you've ever, if you know what reduction is, then uh, just go away for the next couple of minutes. But if you don't, um, if you've ever opened a can of beer and you've seen that. Pss and there's that the cloud of gas that comes out, and there's a slightly um, weird metallic rubbery smell. That's um, that's the evidence that, uh, that it's the, of reduction. It's the opposite. If you're a chemist, it's the opposite of oxidation. In other words, the wine has been made to try and exclude air, which makes a lot of wine go off. Um, it try and exclude it as much as possible. Uh, now, some grapes show reduced characters far more than others, and Syrah is one of the ones that particularly is prone to reduction. Uh, so is Tempranillo from the, the Rioja grape. So I get that, but I also get this rich, sweet um, blackberry and blackcurrant edge, and uh, a different sort of herbiness than uh, from the Garrigue. It's almost, um, it's, it's still got that wild edge, but there's um, almost something metallic here. It's almost as if there's some metal-coated herbs. I'm sure somebody will be selling those for Christmas, metal-coated herbs, if they're not. Hey. There's a bit of toastiness from some oak there. Um, I don't know how old the vines are here. It's funny, it's one of those wines that's quite aromatic and um, it feels like it needs something else to fill in some of the gaps. Um, I'd, I'd almost want a, a bit of Grenache in there just to plump it out, um, or maybe uh, just thinking in, in, in Portuguese terms, something like a bit of a tinta amarela to um, to give it a roundness and softness, and maybe a slightly more flor floral perfume. But um, I, I think, because I, I wouldn't be surprised if a few hours from now that's uh, that reduced character starting to disappear and uh, the wine's coming through more and more. Okay, final one. Circumstance Shiraz 2007 from Stellenbosch in South Africa. Um, and Stellenbosch, uh, sorry, Waterkloof is the, 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 the estate of which this is uh, one of their labels, Circumstance. It's owned by an English guy called Paul Boutineau. And um, Paul bangs on, he does bang on a bit. Paul, sorry if you're listening, but you do bang on. Um, he, he bangs on about wines needing to be uh, good at the table. He, uh, I, what I call the empty bottle test. Sometimes you'll taste a load of wines and you'll plonk them on the table and the ones that sometimes show well in the tastings, they're the ones that everyone's had a sip of and thought, hmm. Uh, whereas the ones that maybe weren't, didn't weren't quite as showy to start with, you plonk them there, they're the, they're the ones that have emptied by the end of the meal. And that for me is a far better test than uh, uh, than whether something gets uh, huge points in certain magazines. Well, I get a bit of that um, burnt, baked South African character. Um, again, the young estate, so young Syrah vines, I think there's a better wine to be produced there in about five or ten years. But I like that... Um, that feral, meaty edge. Sometimes Syrah gets this um, almost orange peel-like character, and I'm getting a bit of that there. Um, and nice dry finish. Sometimes South African wines can just be a bit too heavy and sweet. What this is, this one's got, it's got ripe fruit, but a dry finish. Mm. Again, uh, as with the Labrador, I wouldn't be surprised if this is this is shows better quite a few hours from now. Uh, they're both they're both young wines. I mean, two two and a half years old. 